Hello everybody, here we are in the Church of the Resurrection, Narragin. Today is the 4th of December 2020 and I'm here with our usual Friday morning people and we generally have a saint of the week and today's saint is from last week, James Noble, his commemoration day was Wednesday the 25th of November uh, but being an Australian saint uh, it seemed too good an opportunity uh, to miss. So, uh, so we are commemorating James Noble today. James Noble is known as the first Indigenous Anglican clergyman in Australia. He was born in 1876 and died in 1941. So he was 75 years old when he died. We think he was born around the year 1876, not entirely sure, near Bullia, North Queensland, um, and his parents were from Normanton. In the early 1890s, he was a stockman for the Doyle brothers at Riversley on the Gregory River and was taken south to Invermain, their station near Scone, New South Wales. So he was taken quite a long way from home. Having asked to stay in the district and receive some education, James was given private lessons in the evenings. He was baptised at St Luke's Scone on the 1st of July, 1895, so he was only uh, nine years old at the time, and confirmed six days later. Suffering from poor health, Noble left to work for Canon Edwards of Hewenden. Um, in Queensland, so back into Queensland he went. Um, and then after that, after 1896, he began a relationship with a priest there, the Reverend E. R. Gribble, and, uh, who was the son of a reverend as well, at Yarrabah at a mission near Cairns. And this became a lifelong association between Gribble and James Noble. And so Noble very quickly became indispensable to Gribble's missionary endeavours and on the 11th of October 1901, James was licensed as a lay reader in St John's Parish in Cairns. Uh, three years later, he helped to resettle at Yarrabah some 100 Aborigines or more from Fraser Island. Soon after his arrival at Yarrabah, he married a young woman called Maggie Frew but their son died within months of their marriage and within months of being born rather and his mother shortly after. A year later, uh, Noble became engaged to Lizzie Moore, first matron of Yarrabah Hospital, but she also died. Yes, not a good, not a good start <laughs> for him. But then he later married Angelina, a part Aborigine from Winton, um, she'd been abducted by a horse dealer who, to avoid the authorities, had dressed her in men's clothing and called her Tommy. So she has her own story. There are books written about Angelina Noble. Um, she was noticed by police at Cairns. Uh, she'd been sent to Yarrabah where she did well at the mission school. And so in 1904, as James's wife, Angelina accompanied an ex expedition to the Mitchell River to help choose a mission site. The nobles looked after the party and negotiated with local Aborigines warring with encroaching cattlemen. And that became a tragic story um, over time, um, that difficult relationship between the Indigenous people and, and the cattlemen. In 1905, James returned to the Mitchell with Gribble to unload supplies, pitch tents, and build horse yards, as well as performing religious duties. That year he had charge also of 30 Aborigines farming at Bucky Creek, the largest of the Yarrabah Mission's eight outstations. Then a few years later, Noble represented Gribble at the Synod of North Queensland, and in a year later, 1908, accompanied him to a mission gathering in Brisbane, preaching and addressing large audiences and he was held in high esteem for the way he spoke and the way he preached. 
Next year, the nobles pioneered another mission on the Roper River. They returned to Yarrabah in June 1910. In 1913, at Gribble's request, they set out for a mission reopened at Forest River on the Cambridge Gulf WA. So I had a look on the map and that's right up near the, the border of WA in the Northern Territory, um, near Wyndham, I think, I've got that correct. Um, and it's the sort of estuarine area, looks, looks very, very beautiful. Lots of rivers all converging um, down onto the, onto the coast. So while the, on their way, while the family waited at Darwin for sea transport, noble help services for local Aborigines there. And then arriving at Forest River in April 1914, they found the mission to consist of one hut, a small boat and a few tools. So James Noble got going and built lots and lots of buildings to create a mission there. Uh, he, all um, those buildings included a shed where Angelina treated the sick and overlanded cattle from stations up to over 300 kilometres distant. Noble was licensed as a lay reader at Forest River in 1925 and in May of that year, Gribble sent him to the Eastern States where he preached in numerous churches and addressed meetings. It's sort of mind-boggling really, isn't it? Because at that time, you know, we're sort of thinking all that movement is quite, you know, something for us. You know, even get jumping in a car or jumping in a plane, it's still a lot of travel. Um, so I'm imagining he was, <coughs> I suppose, on horseback, uh, possibly, but... Uh, Yes, incredible. So there he was over in the Eastern States and then uh, on, in 1925 he was made a deacon at St George's Cathedral, Perth. So there's another big leap, <laughs> distance-wise, um, before he returned back to Forest River in the very north of WA. And so he became the first Aboriginal Anglican clergyman in Australia. Following reports in August of 1926 of police reprisals for the spearing of an overseer on a cattle station, so this was a spearing that happened um, by an Aboriginal person. Uh, so a cattle, um, an overseer was killed. Um, Gribble sent noble skilled in tracking to investigate um, and it's quite a, a well-known massacre that occurred sadly. At, uh, at that site um, and at the site of one of the massacres James Noble discovered an improvised oven and the teeth and charred bones there which he brought back together with his evidence before a commission of inquiry in 1927 and this contributed to the arrest of two policemen for murder. Angelina who knew at least five Aboriginal languages interpreted for the inquiry. Mm. By 1928, there were 24 buildings at Forest River, many constructed of sun-dried bricks made by Noble. In 1933, there was a permanent population of 170 Aborigines with some 800 regular visitors. In addition to nursing, Angelina taught the mission children, baked the mission bread, and cooked for the staff. After their return to Yarrabah in 1932, so back to Queensland, the nobles went with Gribble to the Palm Island Mission where Noble was licensed as Assistant Minister on, 19, on the 19th of December, 1933. In declining health, Noble returned with his family the year later to Yarrabah where he visited the hospital and taught traditional skills. After injury from a fall, he died on the 25th of November, 1941, hence um, that being the day of his commemoration, in the Cairns District Hospital, and was buried in Yarrabah Cemetery. According to a grandson, he was a superb horseman, and Gribble claimed him as a gifted speaker whose earnest, unassuming manner completely won all with whom he came in contact. 
Angela died in 1964 in St Luke's Hospital, Yarrabah, where she too was buried, and two sons and four daughters and grandchildren survived them. So an amazing man, and um, along with his wife, Angelina, uh, and um, what a beautiful legacy um, they left behind. Um, we don't learn whether, I've sort of tried to research him fairly thoroughly um, at as many different sites as I could um, on the internet and um, there's not an awful lot more said about him so I don't know whether the missions have continued or, or not um, but um, certainly worthy of our commemoration today. Talk up. Oh. Hello. Good morning. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Good my, my lovely Good clock here. <laughs> Friday morning, Friday morning. <laughs> Thank you.